in the southeastern corner of Nebraska, in the very same place known for being the hometown of writer Willa Cather. There lived another young girl whose fierce and feisty spirit would have made her an ideal Cather heroine. Mom was a talker. I mean, she would tell you about her life, but she really didn't talk about when she was younger, real young. Yeah. It had to have been painful for her. Glennis K. Figgins was born in 1939. She was the third daughter and youngest child of John and Elsie Figgins. Her father was a blacksmith, and the family of five lived in the back of the shop in the small town of Red Cloud. Both of Kay's parents struggled with alcoholism. Basically, Mom was a very independent, fierce child. As Mom grew up, though, she was uh, this joyful child. Um, the community rallied around her. When her parents would leave town to drink, a very young Kay turned to the outdoors and sports to escape. I think she was a natural athlete and enjoyed it so much that she didn't let, let society tell her that she couldn't go out there and she couldn't run and she couldn't ride the horses. Ride the horses yeah. and she couldn't ride the bike in a dress. Right. She just didn't allow society to yeah. dictate her role in life. By her early teens, Kay was living in Hastings with her married sister. There she joined a fast pitch softball league and in 1953, her team placed second in a regional tournament. The sport would have a lasting impact on Kay. Then at 16, Kay quit high school to marry Bill Mulkey, who was 23. The marriage gave Kay security, and within a year, their first daughter was born. Aunt Chloe was worried about mom being, you know, a mother now, and so they came all the way down to the farm to check on mom, and our dad was there, and she asked, where's Kay? And he said, well, she's down at the pond with Brenda. And so they went down to the pond in the pasture. There was one tree there, and Brenda was on a blanket, and Mom was fishing. <laughs> yeah. By 1965, there were three more daughters, and the family was living in Lincoln. In March, Bill went to a local lake to try out his Christmas gift from Kay. It was a canoe, but while in the water, it capsized, and Bill drowned. At 25, Kay was left a widow with four young girls. When you see when she was married to Bill, our dad, um, she was trying to, trying to conform. She was trying to be that perfect housewife. But when dad died, I think she just thought, to heck with that. I'm going to live my life the way I want to. I'm gonna play fast pitch softball in the summer. I'm gonna bowl in the winter. I'm going to go hunting because I really enjoy doing that. On Halloween of the same year, Kay met Wayne Cover. They were married within two months on Christmas Eve. So he had just got out of the military and he thought he was gonna raise us girls like the military. And that didn't go over well because we'd been free range kids for <laughs> since we were this tall, you know. It was a happy marriage, and by the early 70s, Kay and her family returned to Red Cloud. Her daughters were now old enough to play softball, but the town didn't have a league. Kay set out to change that. She played it uh, long before we played, and she played every summer that she could when she wasn't pregnant. She loved the game, so yeah. why wouldn't anybody, any other girl. Yeah. And it, it would give us something to do, you know, in the afternoon, evenings, keep us out of trouble. So she approached the city council and asked for some money to get it started. And they said, no, all the money is for the boys, baseball. Um, and they said, in fact, if you want to play at night, you'll have to pay for the electricity to turn the lights on. Kay was undaunted. She organized three multi-age fast pitch softball teams. The teams couldn't practice on the baseball field, so they used the playground. When the league went on a winning streak, Kay and other mothers went back to City Hall to ask for support. They were given half of the baseball team's money. So I played that whole summer. I played two teams. I played with the younger team and the women's team. I drove down and it was later summer and uh, 
there were some gals playing. And I leaned against my, my car, and I was watching them in the closing innings of this game. And I thought to myself, I think I could do this. And I was 18. I had just finished my first year at Kearney State College. Marla Tigerstrom came from a long line of ball players. Her grandfather, dad, and brother were all catchers. Her mother and aunt played league ball, too. Kay knew about her lineage and made her the team catcher. Connie Miner's parents were also athletic. Her mother ran track in high school. When Kay noticed Connie's natural talent for throwing, she made Connie the team's pitcher. She brought me along really well with the understanding of just go out and throw as hard as you can. We'll work on the technique. Don't worry if you hit some people. We don't care. Um, you know, it's part of the game. I mean, so that never really did bother me. And some people took that as I was cocky and I didn't care, but that's not that. It's part of the game. I mean, that's what I was taught. If someone stepped off the bag, we got you out. If you overran the bag, we got you out. If you were going to bat, we harassed you. <laughs> yeah. I would not want to be, I would not have wanted to play against us. I know. Us. And I've had people come to me later and go, you guys, you were really mean. <laughs> you know, the whole, hey, batter, batter, batter. Yeah. 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 I mean, we just were too good. <laughs> it was just, uh, we, was our... we weren't polite when yeah. we played ball. And that's how we were taught. And that's how you won games. Not a lot of teams that we played played like hard like that. You know what I mean? Like we slid, we dove for balls. You know, we didn't let them bounce in front of us. We're going to lay out and try to make a play. So we were taught that. And a lot of teams we played, they just didn't, not all of them played as aggressively no, as did. we did. Superior did. Yeah. But not all of them. You'd never say it about a baseball team. Red Cloud won 68 games straight. The league played ball as it was meant to be played which sometimes upset the other side. I didn't see Kay lose her cool very often, but it was usually because of mistreatment of one of us players and indiscretion on the field that she felt like she needed to point out to the umpires, you know. Mm -hmm. um, she, would, she would defend us, which was very empowering for us. She had a great knowledge of the game. She always had the softball rules book in her back pocket. Yeah. And she pulled it out in the middle of a game. It's like, well, that's not in the rule book. Well, that's the way we play it here. I mean, I remember him saying that. Yeah, she would. And she could yeah. usually go right to it, too. Yeah. Um, they got on me a lot because once I learned how to pitch and stuff, I really flew off the mound. And they would call, say that I wasn't staying in contact. He would go up and down the third baseline while I was pitching and called me dragging lady. And he was just yelling at me constantly. I ran into a um, former coach that my mom always would fight with. I stop at this roadside uh, melon place, and he's there. He's selling the melons. And I said, hey, Jake. I said, uh, I'm Kay Cover's daughter. And he took one look at me, and he said, your pitcher never pitched legal. <laughs> the town rallied around their softball team. Local businesses sponsored their uniforms, which was uncommon for women's teams. And it drew some attention from their competitors. And they would tease us about that and call them our pajamas. <laughs> oh, you came to the game in your pajamas. They're just different things, you know, what kids do, you know. But it didn't really, it's, none of that like, stuff bothered yeah, us. Well, we were just take a look at the scoreboard, because I think we pajama kids are way ahead of you people. So. <laughs> Kay was active in the league for nearly a decade, but a chronic lung disease brought an end to her coaching days. Then, in 1988, at just 48 years old, Kay Cover died. I think that we all knew that she truly cared about us as a, a person, not so much as an athlete, and giving that opportunity to us that I don't think she had as much. She knew how to make you feel important to the team. She was very positive. I think one of the biggest things she gave a lot of young girls was confidence in themselves. That's what I think was a big key. Because, you know, where do you get that from when in that age, you know? So I look back and think, wow, if, you know, where would we be if we didn't have women like that? But that was a role model for us because it was a woman that went out there and said, you guys, we're gonna have softball. And, um, and she taught us so much.
her whole life, she fought the good fight. Yeah. And along the way, she made good trouble. 